Hello and welcome back to the Josh and Anna podcast, previously known as Imagine Two People, Mm -hmm. and now I'm considering going back to that name (laughs) because I like it so much. It's a great name. I don't know why I switched it. Would it make it more like... We're finding ourselves. Yeah, we're. This is self-exploratory. This okay? is this is our version of going backpack in, in Europe for a year. <laughs> this is our backpacking <laughs> trip. Okay, mm-hmm. but we've got a ton of different stories. Yeah. Um, that have just come out, and they've just been stacking up. So we'll get through what we can. Yes. But whatever we can't, we'll just we'll just save for the next one. Mm-hmm. So the first story is very disturbing. It's all those artificial sweeteners we've been using to keep ourselves slim are actually killing us. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Like every time that we try to get rid of things that are not good for us, but we want to keep using them so we create something else that is like that, it never goes right, guys. I mean, I've heard for years like, people talking about, oh, well, isn't aspartame like bad for your microbiome and mm-hmm. things like that? I've seen, um, you know, the sweeteners being not recommended because they make you crave. Uh, they, they Interesting. They increase your cravings, so you're avoiding the sugar, but you the craving is still there. It's very frustrating for me because it's people that are trying to eat better Mm -hmm. and be healthier, and they're thinking, okay, we know the health effects that come with sugar. It's empty calories make you fat, Mm -hmm. and it spikes your blood sugar, causes inflammation. Like we know that, Mm -hmm. and so you're trying to get this alternative that doesn't even taste as good. Yeah, but it just ends up being just as bad as sugar. Sometimes worse. So anyway, there was researchers out of North Carolina. Um, Susan Schiffman was leading the study, Mm -hmm. and they basically found that specifically Splenda, Mm -hmm. which I guess its real name is sucralose, they not only found that it had a negative impact on your gut, Uh and it potentially can cause IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, which is this whole other thing, Mm -hmm. but it can also break down in your stomach, your gut bacteria can combine with the sucralose mm-hmm. and create sucralose 6 acetate, which is a super sciencey word for a compound that they're finding is genotoxic, which causes your own DNA to break down. You know what I just realized? I just realized that all of the articles and uh, the parts of the podcast that we talk about health and health concerns. It sounds like we're against so many things and it's always something like, (laughs) oh, you can't exactly just don't eat this ever again. But the thing is, it's always something that is not found in nature. Like it's always something that we produced. Yep. So it's not that like we're not against all foods. Like I am pro all foods, but usually the things that we discover, oh, this is not great for you. It's it's things that we make as people and not not the nature gives you, you know? That's a good point. And it's not just the food, but also whatever we used to do Mm -hmm. exercise-wise, how much we used to be out in the sun, Mm -hmm. how much we used to be around people, Mm -hmm. how much we, this, that, and the other thing. It's like you go over, how did we used to live back in the day? And then how are we living now? The delta between those two things causes most of the issues that we have today. Not all of them, Mm -hmm. but most of them. A lot. And so we're seeing a huge explosion in processed foods, and then we're seeing an explosion and all these health issues Mm -hmm. it's like obviously there's a correlation there right so this can alter your genes somehow yeah so when you take sucralose Uh it's fine by itself Uh but when it's combined when it comes in contact with your gut bacteria Uh it combines to form a new compound that's genotoxic so So what does that mean so i guess what it means is it causes your own dna to get damaged Oh, oh, that's not good. People don't realize that when you eat a food, mm-hmm. like if you eat like some burgers and you have 600 gram patty, mm-hmm. 0.002 grams of that patty is cow DNA. So you're actually eating cow DNA. Right. So if the DNA of the cow is damaged, uh-huh. you can get damage from that DNA because oh, wow. you're eating DNA. And so we have our own DNA that reacts to the food we're eating. And what they're saying here is that they're finding sucralose breaks down, combines with your gut bacteria right. to damage your own DNA. Oh. Which I don't even know what the repercussions of that would be. I'm not yeah. a scientist, but that sounds bad, right? I never thought about this. I'm just, I'm just processing this now. It sounds very bad. It's crazy. And there's a separate article we we're going to talk about where they're finding the worse, the more you cook your food, uh-huh. especially burning your food, um, like a hot sear, hmm. that actually damages the DNA of the food you're eating and can cause DNA problems for you. So is it like the the burning or the cooking itself, like making it more soft? Or is it like the charring? I think it's the charring. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
All right. But the char is the best part. I know. And there's a, <laughs> there's actually proof showing that it creates these flavor compounds that uh -huh. are delicious, which is why we love charred food. Yeah. But it comes with damaged DNA. Why is life like this? Everything good comes with a cost. <laughs> it's so frustrating. It's like that movie that, you know, time was money. How is that movie called? You know, they had like the little clock. Oh, the arms. wrist. Yeah. The and wrist. like you have to pay for a piece of bread with some time. It's like just the same. You eat a piece of bread and you like diminish two days of your life. I <laughs> I have watched these people, <laughs> these people who spend so much money and time to make themselves live as long as they can, like uh -huh. these longevity experts. Yes. When you listen to their routine, it sounds so sad. It's like a, a, a full-time job. Just it's a full-time job and yeah. you're like, you're eating like beets and like, it's just kale, kale and beets, <laughs> like dipped in lemon juice yeah. and that's your life. You're a kale beet yeah. juice dude. It's like, is it worth it? Like I squeezed out another 10 years of yeah. just eating beets and kale. It's like, why though? I mm -hmm. eat how you want. Maybe I think it's a balance. I yeah. think it's a happy balance between the two. It's probably what you do most of the time. Yeah. Not what you do some of the time. I think that thinking too much about, you know, about food and how you have to eat and survive and, and live longer. I don't think that's healthy in itself. Like your mm. life shouldn't surround upon like you're you're thinking about all the calories you're eating and what you're eating all the time i think that it should like you say be a balance like you're enjoying your life but also maybe bring the things into your home that would be okay for you to eat at any time and the things that are not okay just don't bring them just don't buy those things like i just had a, a hangout in, in our house and you know like it was a bunch of kids and they left like sh uh, uh soda and uh, a lot of sugar, chips. A lot of sugar and products. i was like please don't don't leave this here now so we, we eat don't it. buy we eat this it every stuff. night now <laughs> until it's gone like i'm gonna eat it and we do not buy this we do not buy it because if i buy it i'll eat it so i don't want to be overthinking this every day and i don't think it's a good thing to think about one thing all the time so just buy the things that you know are okay for you to eat and you know maybe think about other things have a hobby you know go outside do other things do make your other life things. a balanced life yeah agreed no that's a great way to put it you know because any obsession i think can get out of balance and yeah. then you end up like at what cost are you solving this problem without creating other problems in your right. life well the other thing is uh about the the sucralose thing is that we only have this problem because we try to get rid of sugar without getting rid of sweetness. Mm -hmm. So you could get rid of the problem by just not eating so many sweet things, but you want to keep the same lifestyle when it's the lifestyle that is the problem. Right. So it's true with all the, the processed foods that are becoming a problem now is that you know that they, they're bad or they're rooted in something bad and you do not want to give up having that pleasure. But the pleasure itself, it's out of control. So maybe, you know, you can have fruits, but even fruits, like if you eat it all the time, it's still a lot of sugar. But, you know, if you just say that, okay, the amount of sweetness that we eat is just wrong. Like this is not the, the, the style that we should live by. So we denounce the style in itself and we just accept like, you know, a treat at the end of the day or you know on the weekends or whatever that's the norm and that's what we should do and then you don't try to okay instead of sugar I'll just use sucralose or stevia or whatever you just uh, accept that you're just eating too much too many sweet things and it shouldn't be like that at all just like bring it down and become uh, um, have create your own uh, standard for how much sweetness you should eat or how much of whatever it is that you should eat like just denounce the standard because the standard is all jacked up anyway this reminds me of the graph showing the um, amount of sugar we used to eat 50 years ago mm -hmm. versus today for the average american mm -hmm. per year mm -hmm. i think it was in pounds of sugar uh -huh. um, let me actually find that graph it'd be really helpful Okay, so this is the graph of sugar consumption from mm -hmm. 1822 to 2005. Mm -hmm. So back in 1812 or in 1820, you had about, what is that, like five pounds of sugar a year? Yes, yeah, That the average American would consume, seven pounds. Yeah. Now it's more like a hundred pounds. Wow. So that's a serious 10, 12 X increase. Wow. And we've seen an increase in heart disease, cardiovascular disease, inflammation diseases, cancers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's directly related. Mm -hmm. If you go to get a test to find out if you have certain types of cancers, what they'll do 
is they'll take a syringe full of this sugary solution mm -hmm. that also has a bioluminescence thing mm -hmm. and it they inject it into you it pumps through your veins and then they use a camera that can look at where all that sugar is rushing to oh. and they can find where the cancer is because the cancer loves sugar you know this even reminds me of the sugar discussion of sugar versus um artificial sugar yeah reminds me of the fat discussion that we yes. had a few episodes ago talking about how from the dawn of time till now mm -hmm. we've always used lard and butter and yeah. now we're using all these processed oils because right. we're like oh butter and lard it's fat it's bad for you you know mm -hmm. and so now we want to eat these quote-unquote healthier oils Oils, yeah, which come with a huge amount of side effects, right? And so we're just starting to figure that out. But there's a huge curve. It's like you have a problem, even if it's a self-induced problem mm -hmm. of oh, I think I should be eating not as much butter, mm -hmm. and you create a new solution, usually mm -hmm. a very processed solution. Yes, that processed solution takes fifty to a hundred years to yes. figure out that this is actually really bad for you. Yeah. And then there's a societal adjustment mm -hmm. to it saying, oh, now we know that Splend is bad. And yeah. so we use this other thing now. Yeah. And then there's another time period where they're yeah. just using that, you know, happy and free yes. until they figure out that too was bad for yeah. several reasons. Yeah. So I'm seeing, I don't know what to call them. Who are the type of people who are, I wouldn't call them hippies, but they're like more societal rebels and they're like i'm gonna wear bare feet everywhere yeah, and like I'm, the crunchy moms the and... crunchy granola moms yeah. who you know won't do a lot of the things that people are doing you right. know don't let their kids use phones or social media and right. like they're just like i'm just gonna say no to all of that yes you know what are they doing now and that will probably be mainstream 30 years from now <laughs> yes many of the things maybe not all of it i mean i've my social media is filled with people that have their own gardens and they mm -hmm. make like their own medicine and they have like, oh, you can eat from what you plant. And it's like, this this is like trendy now. Right. But it wasn't. It wasn't. Before, it was you were the innovator to yeah. be doing that. Yeah. So I, I, I think what I'm trying to say is look at the crunchy granola moms because it's <laughs> copy possible. Them. Yeah, copy some they of the are things. They're the OG influencers that nobody's talking about. So funny. You know, it's like um, Ashton Kutcher years ago was talking about how you shouldn't shampoo and use all these body washes. Yeah. And now everyone's talking about the no shampoo movement, <laughs> yeah. things like that. Anyway, so many other topics here. There's no easy way mm -hmm. to segue into any of these. I can't. Just read it. Oh my gosh, what 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 is that? This one? Yeah. If you haven't seen this, it's the uh, the TikToker talking about time blindness. Oh yes, Do, yeah. Should we play this so that people can hear it? It's only 50 seconds long. Sure. Let's just play it real quick. So I just got yelled at for asking a very reasonable question. So I'm applying to go somewhere and I just wanted to know, are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time, you know? And then the person I was with interrupted and acted like I was asking something else. And then when we were done, they actually started yelling at me and saying that accommodations for time blindness doesn't exist. And if you struggle with being on time, you'll never be able to get a job, you know, provided you're trying your absolute best to be there. And then they're like, your stupid generation wants to destroy the workplace. And yeah, I think that a culture where workers are just cut off because they struggle with being on time when there's other solutions that we can look to. I think that just anybody who thinks it's okay to just treat people like that, yeah, that culture needs to be dismantled. I mean, the, the obvious retort here is, like, I get it. Some people are better at showing up on time than others, but do you really, are you really saying that you don't have the ability to set an alarm? Is here's, that what it comes down to? Like, you can't a, set an alarm? Some people can wake up. I remember getting asked that question, like, a couple of years ago. A friend of mine told me, like, uh, so what time do you usually woke up, wake up on weekends? And I was like, well, I don't know. She was like, well, what time does your body, mm -hmm. you know, just normally by itself wakes up? And I was like, I don't think my body has that. Like, sometimes I wake up at 7 a.m. and I will force myself to go back to sleep. Or sometimes I wake up and it's 11. Like, I'll never know. But some people just have this, this biological ability from infancy almost to wake up at the same time without every an alarm day, clock. without an alarm clock but most of us human beings we need an alarm some of us like myself need five <laughs> i have an alarm that goes up at five or at seven another one that goes at seven ten, and another emergency one that goes at seven twenty. in case i dismiss the two first ones <laughs> because i can't be trusted i am one of the people that say let me just close my eyes for a second and then an hour goes by mm -hmm. and i missed you know everything important that i i had to be on like i've been in trouble 
so many times for doing that, but I know what it is. I just know that I need a better system. And throughout life, I just improved my system. I have like different devices going off at the same time. So I have to get up and like, you know, turn both of them off. So, uh, um, it, 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 it requires so much work that I'm up, like I'm up. So it, this, I, I don't understand how you can create a name for something and think that you're special for it. Like everybody, most of us don't know what time it is. Most of the day we have to look, we have to look, we set reminders, we set alarms. We need to surround ourselves with clocks and like watches and our phones and everything, because we do not know what time it is. We all need help with that. Some of us more than others, but still like nobody's walking out like. I have to eat now. It's noon. Like you don't just know this stuff. The thing about this that really gets me mm. is that she's creating content. She yeah. knows how to use a phone, get yeah. into an app, create an account, yeah. set a thumbnail, yeah. make a make a little speech, right. upload it. Like the amount of things you need to do to do something like that, mm -hmm. you can set an alarm. Right. You know, if you don't have the ability mm -hmm. to respond to an alarm, I don't even know what that would be called, but let's say mm -hmm. you didn't even have that ability. Mm -hmm. It is going to be very hard to hold a job, right? Because if you can't show up on time to a job, you yeah. can't be at the job you're supposed to do, right? There's nothing that they can do, right? You know, that's just what it is. If you ran a business, if she, if she, if she, her TikTok <laughs> blew up yeah. and she had an editor yeah. and the editor just wasn't editing anything yes. because they were like, we just don't know what time it is. You know, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Wednesday's for <fourth, laughs> Thursday and Thursday's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> she would get really mad yeah, and she right. would probably find someone who can. And right. so these people, my guess is that she's exaggerating a little bit with like them yelling at her. They probably yes. weren't yelling at her. They probably thought she was ridiculous, but yeah. I bet they weren't yelling. And yeah. I also think she might've been stretching the truth when she said that they, and I quote, your stupid generation is always looking for blah, blah, yes. blah. Like, I doubt they called her a stupid generation. Yes. I think she probably embellished that a little bit. Yeah. But she's emotional. She just started crying. She yeah. probably bombed a job interview because she's starting to realize that yeah. the, real, the real world doesn't work like social media works. Yeah. And that's why it's so incredibly important for people to not only raise their kids with a realistic parenting mindset, mm -hmm but to prepare people in school yeah. and not baby them yeah. with these crazy woke concepts yes. because the real world doesn't work like that. Yes. You go to a job interview and you start talking about time blindness, yeah. they're gonna laugh at you and pick someone who actually seems legitimate and yeah. has a head on their shoulders. Well, the thing is, the thing that really bothers me about this kind of content is what, something we talked about over dinner the other day, which is I think there's some people that talk in terms of like, oh, something's not fair and or the world shouldn't be like this what she's saying like oh if you uphold people to a certain standard if they struggle with something that is not fair like you can't do that because certain people struggle with this here's the thing you can't see the world through a lens that says like oh the world should be like this i would love if the world you know was something else i would love i me anna would love if there's so many things about the world was different but it is not. So you're wasting your time talking about how the world should be. Now, certain changes are possible and some people know that and they become entrepreneurs. Like you open companies, you create nonprofits, you create organizations and you start doing something about it. But if you're a person that has a phone and all you do about it is, you know, complain about it to other people on TikTok, you are the problem. Like you're not doing anything of importance for the world. Nobody cares about your little speech. Nobody cares about this. If we were talking like, you know, I just don't think that cars should look the way that they do. It's just so sad that this is what we drive. And like, if I want to do something about it that actually matters, I would just go and, you know, study design and try to get a job at a car company. I don't know, like do something about it, but we're not. So when people talk about fairness, it's such a ridiculous company because some things are not about fair or unfair. Some things just are, you know, it's not unfair that we cannot fly. We just cannot fly. There's just gravity. And if you decide that gravity cannot hold you and you jump out of a building, you're still going to die because you do not decide if that thing is for you or not. It just exists. And there's a bunch of things now that just exist, but people decided to make them a right or, you know, like I don't identify with this or, you know, I do not want to be uphold to the standard. Like it just 
is. You're right. That that's a that's a fundamental law of not physics, but a fundamental law of society. And I think right. you can you can judge a fundamental law of society by taking it to its extreme. And yeah. you say, what if mm -hmm. she had her way and yeah. every company by law was uh -huh. mandated that they did not they were not able to hold employees to the standard of time. Right. No one would show up. Yeah. <laughs> if you could still get paid and you could just say, I'm sorry, I didn't know what time it was. So that's why yeah. I didn't come, didn't come in today. Yeah. You know, like no one would come in. Society would just grind to a halt. Right. You know, it's, it's absolutely preposterous. It is. And it, the other thing is that people that talk about um, their rights or their emotions and they only consider themselves when there are clearly other people involved in the equation. That really bothers me too. Like when you talk about, you know, how you feel like you should be able to come in late. What about the people waiting for you? Like what about their right to be respected because they showed up on time and it might be really hard for them. They might have something going on at home, but they understood priorities and they were like, oh, I'm going to be back at this time. I have to go now. And they left. But you decided that you are the most important being in the world and you just show up and you disrespect those other people. I cannot with this because you're talking so much about yourself. You're literally filming yourself talking about yourself on your page on the Internet and you're creating these names about things that you struggle with. Like it's you, 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 you. When are other people involved on that story and you're not regarding any of their emotions you're just not regarding anybody else and when you put like the the biblical principle of you know treating others like you want to be treated and loving others like you love yourself this is it like this is the lack of that you're not considering anybody else you only consider them yourself and you can't have a society literally any society without that principle you need to be considerate and other people will be considerate too. So that's how we work. You know, you don't punch anybody in the face. Nobody punches you in the face. Everybody, nobody gets punched in the face. And that's how we live. And you get home and you're like, look, babe, I didn't get punched in the face because we have this rule that we don't need to talk about that we treat people the way that we want to be treated. And that's it. So in other news, have you heard of the organization Birth Strikers? So I've I've seen that, but I don't know much about it. I'm reading this on The Guardian. Meet mm -hmm. the women who refuse to have children until climate change ends. So is this group like, do they meet to meet each other? And like, oh, this person doesn't want kids, so I also don't want kids, so let's come together and be partners. Is that it? Or they just, no. it's just a support group? It's, I think it's an activist group. So here they're, they're pouring 200 liters of artificial blood outside of Downing Street. Yeah, um, because that has no effect in nature at all. A bunch of uh, uh, food color on, on the floor. So I think the idea is they're trying to spread awareness. But for sure. me, like I'm, I, I understand her concerns. But at the same time, I think I can speak for all of the rest of us who are fine with having kids mm -hmm. to say that we've heard your terms and we accept them. <laughs> yeah, You exactly. could stop having kids if you want to stop having kids. For me, let, let me be completely honest here. Like mm -hmm. I'm joking, but let me be completely honest. When I see things like this, mm -hmm. it makes me sad, mm -hmm. but it also makes me realize some people have such a small mindset yeah. where they think, oh, the world's ending and so I should stop having kids. Yeah. Like, do you know how many times there's been things that could potentially end the world. Right. You don't just stop having kids because you're worried. And if you do, that self-selects and gets rid of people yeah. who do that. We came a lot closer to being actually ended many times. Oh, yeah. You think back in the 1800s when mm. we were on horse-drawn carriages and there mm. were all these horses in the streets, mm. there were concerns and there were actual studies saying if we keep growing at this population, right. the amount of horses we'll need for this population mm. will eventually cause everyone to be living under four feet of of horse poop uh -huh. and they were saying we have to start banning horses <laughs> of course then henry ford comes along yeah and he creates the model t and mm -hmm. now we have automobiles that replace yeah. the horse right and so now they're talking well now there's too many cars so yeah. we should just ban cars yeah that's not the solution or stop having kids right that's such a defeatist mindset because you yeah. can't just stop doing that. You should innovate and create the new car right. for this horse problem. Right. And you never know who is going to innovate. So what if one of these kids that you're trying not to have is the one kid that is going to invent something new? That is like the against Thanos logic. You know, like Thanos came. It's like, let's just take half the population in the universe because that's going to save the resources. The problem is... We are always innovating, like you said, like, and you never know who is going to be the one to do it. So it might be that you're just 
halting innovation because you just, you know, say like, oh, we can't all uh, of us alive right now. We can't figure this out. So nobody in the future can. So let's just, you know, eliminate everyone because we know better. This is such a defeatist, closed minded scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite of the way science needs to develop. The more yeah. minds you have, the more people can figure this out. Right. You know, the thing with Thanos, mm -hmm. I know it's just a stupid like a uh, superhero movie. Yeah. He instead of having the population like right. Thanos decided to do. What if he just doubled the resources? Right. Like no one considered these obvious things. Like what about instead of banning all fossil fuels, mm -hmm. which is the only thing bringing the most poor people in the entire mm -hmm. world out of poverty right yes. now? Yes. Why not create a different alternative source of energy? Right. Why not? Why not start up more nuclear power plants or invest more in nuclear fusion, which we've already proven is a concept that works? Yes. And yeah. so these types of things will completely change the world. Yeah. It's not banning more things or stop having kids. Yeah. I mean, if you want to stop having kids, like that's fine. You yeah. should you, you're free to to do that if yes. you want to do that you probably should because you think this way this is um an argument that is purely based on emotion and not you know on fact it's the same with the fossil fuels thing it's not that we like it it's that when you look at all the measures to make the fossil fuels like less predominant into the world they all result in such minimal like they have such minimal results that they don't make any sense a lot more people are dying from being cold in the winter because the price of the gas is going up and up and up and in some places in europe like too expensive for people to be able to afford then people are dying from being hot and if you can't afford gas what you end up burning in most third world countries mm -hmm. right now is wood and cow dung which so, is a lot worse poop and wood burning those as a fuel source mm -hmm. is infinitely more polluting right than fossil fuels themselves so people don't realize that the only way to stop a lot of these deaths hundreds of thousands of deaths a year yeah and to lift people out of third world countries into the first world is through more fossil fuels mm -hmm. i don't think we're actually at the point where we should just decide blanketly as a whole to yeah. stop having kids yeah. and to start banning things completely outright yeah. because that doesn't make sense to me. What makes sense is that there's already solutions ahead of us mm -hmm. that are very viable mm -hmm. and we should be pursuing those. Yeah, I mean, China already tried this with the one kid policy. The late uh, end of the century and uh, it ended, I think, seven years ago we ended 2016 they started saying you can have two kids if you want now right so it just it just ended but it ended because it was a catastrophe a catastrophe the problem a was difficult word no it, it was a catastrophe because it ended up that people just wanted to have a male heir to exactly. carry on the family name and so, so a lot of abortions were made or people were killing their kids after they were born because they were girls and then they have no girls to marry so now your population is going to grow older and no more people are going to replace those people. So your solution of not having kids because, oh, we have too many people polluting the earth. Not only is kind of cruel because you're putting, you're putting the environment on top of people. Like you're looking at other people around you and say like, well, some of us shouldn't be here. Basically, that's what you're saying. Like we have too many people. Well, who is going to disappear? Oh, my children. I'm not going to have children. So you're only, you're also killing, like you're not only killing your, uh, um, family history you're not going to pass it on and your genes that could again create the person that is going to help innovate the world you're renouncing the world of that and you're renouncing your family of that but also you're putting the environment as something bigger than your fellow human and you know when that happens it's not only bad in itself but in a few years someone needs to replace the population from now and that's not happening in a lot of people in a lot of countries like China and Japan. Like they're having problems with their their uh, current population not being young enough. For several, it's like several different reasons. Yes. China and Japan, they're both starting to reach that issue. Yes. Japan much more so. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's happening for different reasons. Yeah. I've read that in order to just sustain your population, you mm -hmm. need to have on average 2.1 kids. Mm -hmm. And those, so that gets rid of accidental miscarriages as well as replaces both the mom and the dad. Mm -hmm. And so if it's 2.1, anything less than 2.1 kids per family, you start to collapse your population, right. which has a domino effect of increasing the speed of collapse. Right. But the opposite is true as well. So if you have more than 2.1, you create more people who create mm -hmm. more people and it's exponentially growing. Right. So right now, Japan, I think their birth rate is 1.34 births per Women, so it's a lot lower than they need. They're absolutely collapsing right now. And I actually just watched a video about this mm -hmm. um, where they're 
the government in Japan is currently trying to create financial incentives yeah. because people don't want to have kids. And the main reason they don't, according to surveys done by the government, is that it's too expensive. People are like, it's expensive enough for me to live. How yeah. in the world could I bring a child? And so they're, yes. they're creating child tax credits and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it has almost no effect. It's like a, sl a very small effect, yeah. but it's not really helping much. Yeah. In China, they're having the hangover from the one child policy, creating mm -hmm. a skewed gender dynamic. Yeah. And so now they're suffering for that. But speaking of China, that actually reminds me of our last story here. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard about how they're using AI in the classrooms no. to start to monitor children? No. So you haven't heard this? They, they use these headbands with these electrodes on them that sense brain waves. And uh -huh. so you have different brain waves when you're concentrating uh -huh. versus when you're daydreaming. Okay. And so they're measuring it real time, sending it to a dashboard that the parent, that the, um, that the teacher looks at. And they also send real time reports every hour to the parents. So you can see an hour by hour concentration dashboard of your own child. And they start using it to monitor them and figure out who's paying attention and who's not. That is, that is, that seems like, um, black mirror. Oh, it a hundred percent is like they went full, they embrace black mirror. They're like, <laughs> we're just going to do it all. Give us all the episodes. We're just going <laughs> to yeah. do it all. They got these little like cloud looking wall -E looking robots yeah. in the classroom and they scan the faces to figure out who's paying attention and who's not. So it's the headbands and it's cameras from the robots. And so they're just always watching. I have so many questions about this. Like, what about kids with uh, HD? You're screwed. Or if you're <laughs> dyslexic or um, I don't know, like what do, what else can they use this in? Like, um, is different kids that think differently rewarded in different ways or is everybody expected to perform? You know what I'm saying? Like how? I don't know. All I know is that they're using something called EEG and it's used in hospitals for different types of brain scans. But there's this neuroscientist, what's uh -huh. his name? Theodore Zanto. He's basically talking. He said he's surprised that China is doing this because this type of brain scan isn't very accurate. Yeah. And even if you have like a fidgety foot, it can make it seem like you're yeah. distracted, yeah. but you're not, you might be paying attention. Yeah. So it's very imperfect. It's like using a crude tool to get imperfect results. Yeah. But the point is they're doing things real time to measure every one of their students and sending this data everywhere. And what was surprising to me is that most of the parents, at least according to this journalism by the Wall Street Journal, yeah. most of the parents were fine with it. They asked the parents first if they were willing to do this and or willing to allow this. And most were perfectly fine with it. Well, this is also the country that has like the social credits and, and people get scanned to go anywhere. Yep. So um, you, it pay might with, be... you, you pay with your face now. I mean, that is there's so many things that, that concern me. It might be like I'm, I might be like one of the crunchy granola people, you know, at this point. At this point, I will I will put that label on myself. Because this is just worrisome for me. You know what this reminds me of? Uh. This reminds me of the intelligence quotient test that was originally developed. And mm. I think the IQ test, if I'm not mistaken, was developed by a Stanford scientist back in the First World War. So it was like 1914-ish. Mm -hmm. And they used it to scan millions of Americans and figure out like if we can rank their relative intelligence to give the relatively more intelligent the best opportunities mm -hmm. post wartime mm -hmm. um, and for what it is it's essentially trying to find people who are good at both math and english those are the two different sections everything else that's it yeah yeah th that is it like so the ultimate goal then if you reverse engineer that is it self-selects someone who would make the best professor they're academics. They're basically academics. That's yeah. like the goal of it. And so it's self-selecting people who are very good at accomplishing a single metric within a system. Yeah. But it's self-selecting people out of that who yeah. don't have that or yeah. don't have other areas. And so after that Stanford scientist did that, it, it became like our only tool. And it kind of reminded me of back in the 20s when we had electroshock therapy for mental illness mm -hmm. and then we had lobotomies yeah. and like lobotomies were an improvement over shock therapy somehow yeah and now we don't do a lobotomies but we use like uh the we use the typical um antipsychotics and yeah. then soon we created the atypical antipsychotics it's like we're slowly getting a little bit better but they're okay. all really crude exactly. really imperfect tools yeah and so like the intelligence quotient 
as interesting as that idea is, mm -hmm. it only self-selects for a certain type of intelligence. Yeah, yeah. And they're finding, well, what about the type of people who have incredibly good social skills? Yes. People who can climb corporate ladders, who yeah. understand politics, yeah. people who understand the social situation in an entire group, yeah. people who are able to um, self-motivate, mm -hmm. people who are able to um, get back up after they're knocked down metaphorically mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. continue in the face of resistance, mm -hmm. people who are able to inspire and motivate their group and people yeah. around them yeah there's so many other different levels of intelligence right. that they're finding yeah there's a new group of psychologists out of harvard mm -hmm. who are saying that we should be looking at both we should look at um iq mm -hmm. but only as like one out of the seven forms of intelligence mm -hmm. and they have all these other forms of intelligence with further breakdown into 23 yeah. forms of intelligence yeah. i think this is just like going from electroshock to lobotomy to atypical psychotics to typical psychotics right and we're going to go further and further and further yeah and we're going to look back and be like yeah iq is dumb it was dumb that we had this SAT score that would add up to a perfect 2400. Yeah. And we gave only those kids mm -hmm. the best scholarships, the best opportunities yeah. and all these things. Like we basically were limiting ourselves by potentially excluding a lot of brilliant people. Well, I think that uh, the IQ test could could be used forever for certain professions. Like if you're trying to be an engineer or a doctor or, you know, something that it's going to require an academic mind then do the academic test. But a lot of people were not called to that. Like I am a firm believer that not everybody should go to college. Um, and like right now, I don't think anybody should go to college because colleges are a shame, but most, most of them anyway. But um, even if, you know, if you had really colleges doing education and not indoctrination and they're actually charging you a fair price, like not a fair price, but a market price, not a price, you know, uh, influenced by the government's help, which is what goes on mostly in the U.S. Like the, the price of education is so incredibly ridiculous uh, that nobody can afford it. Um, but even with that, even if the world was perfect and colleges were great, I don't think any uh, everybody was made for that life. And that's not calling someone that wasn't made for college stupid. You're just not made to be an academic. And I met a lot of people in college that were perfectly fine, but they were not meant to be there. It was just like, you shouldn't be, you're wasting your time. And you are going to think of yourself as someone not capable because you're measuring yourself by the wrong metrics. Mm. So I do not think that the IQ test is like overrated or outdated. I think it's good if you're looking for those certain professions. If you're look, looking into going to academics, it's perfect. If you're not, then it's not like in, in school, I used to give my answers to everybody in the class because back then I didn't understand why I was against it, but I was against the idea of, you know, uh, we have a test every month and, you know, I would get the higher score most of the times for the whole class. I was not a good student. I just had a very good memory. So if I paid attention to the class, I, I, that was it. Like, that's all I need to do. I read the book once and it, it's fine. But I saw my, my colleagues spending so much time studying because they struggled with it and they were so smart. They knew so many things that I didn't know, but they still failed at the test because it, it was just not, you know, something that they were good at. So I was just like, you know what? <laughs> I don't think I deserve to get like the first place on this, this class. So I would give everybody, you know, my answers. And at some point my math teacher just put me away and <laughs> she put me next to her. Like, Get out of like here. Like you can, I know what you're doing. You have to stop. But it's because I believe that schools usually measure your uh, memory and not your intelligence. Or if they do, they measure one kind of intelligence and not all. So, you know, we, we have a lot to learn, I think as, as a society. I think it's a great place to end it because yes. we do have a lot to learn. As we a do society. have a lot to learn. <laughs> We got through most of these stories, but not all. So thank you guys for watching. We'll come back in hopefully another week and yes. hammer out the rest of these stories. If you have any other stories that you think we should discuss in the next episode, please leave those in the comments Yep. and follow us on social media. All right, bye. Bye, guys.